sometimes, <laughs> once in a while. 86-year-old Hadija can't stop crying. 16 months ago, her daughter Naima stepped on a cluster bomb in her own garden. Only one of hundreds of thousands left lying in the ground after being used by Israel during its war with Hezbollah in 2006. Naima used to support her mother as a tobacco farmer. Now she's disabled and the family has to rely on charity. I cry so much, she says, I can barely see with my own eyes. I cry when I look at the state that my daughter is in. She is just one of 328 people who have been killed or wounded by unexploded munitions since Israel withdrew from Lebanon. This is the artillery delivered. Which is why Johan Hahn has come all the way from South Africa to Lebanon. Wounded while trying to disarm an IED in Afghanistan, he's the operations manager for the UK company Backtack International, which detects and disarms leftover weapons of war. But now he's shutting down the entire operation. There's going to be no one in the field. We're starting tomorrow. Starting tomorrow. He, along with the people of southern Lebanon, rely mainly on money from governments. Countries like Saudi Arabia, the UK, the United States, and the United Arab Emirates have all given millions to clear southern Lebanon of unexploded ordnance. But the money has simply dried up. And with a global recession, which is, we all know is a problem, it makes the politics even more difficult. So you're dealing with two problems. You're dealing with a global economic problem, you're dealing with a political problem. And the socioeconomic in the country. Because I have people phoning me that used to work for me. Can I have a job? Can I have a job? And I say, I, I cannot. I don't have a job. I don't even know if I have a job myself tomorrow. Diab Diab is one of more than 100 who yeah, will lose their jobs with Backtack. He, too, is a mind clearer and has paid a heavy price. He lost an eye and part of his leg and countless nights of sleep as he worked to clear his very own fields. But he tells me he wants to get back to work. It's hard to lose one's job, he says. Despite the risks and dangers you run, you get used to it. It becomes routine. Backtech accounts for a quarter of the clearance work being done in Lebanon. Its abrupt departure will have consequences. So this right here is the end of the line. This is the end of the line. The line goes down here, right on the edge there. Again, that is the end of the line. So if we go walking into that field, you're, you're, you're running a high risk of you're stepping You're running a high risk of getting injured, yeah. As the team packs up, the impact of the global financial crisis is felt in this small field in southern Lebanon. Mohammed, too, will have to wait even longer to tend land that hides a potential disaster. Of course I am upset, he says. They're supposed to finish their work so we can walk freely and cultivate our land in order to make a living. A farmer unable to make a living, a family left almost destitute, and a foreigner who will have to look for work somewhere else, all of them victims of a world in recession. Calperi, CNN, Southern Lebanon.